You've heard the joke, right? Fusion power is the energy of the future, and it always will be. For decades now, it's been just around the corner, always 30 years away. But what if the problem isn't that we can't actually create fusion? What if the real problem is that we've been trying to put a star in a box, and the box, well, it just keeps breaking? Let's get into it. So this is the big question we're tackling. Have we been spinning our wheels for 70 years because the fundamental physics is just too hard? Or is it because the machines we're building, these absolutely massive, incredibly complex reactors, are just fundamentally flawed? The thinking we're digging into today makes a really bold claim. It's the machine. Okay, so here's how we're going to break this all down. First, we're going to look at what are basically the two fatal flaws in pretty much all current fusion reactor designs, what's called the wall problem and the super old school steam cycle. Then we'll get into a totally different idea that flips the whole thing on its head, how that might actually work, and what a future powered by it could look like. All right, first up, let's talk about the fundamental issue that's causing these massive fusion projects to burn through billions upon billions of dollars with no actual power plant even on the horizon. It's a surprisingly simple idea, but its consequences are, well, they're absolutely devastating for the way we're doing things now. This one sentence really, really gets to the heart of it. In any of the current fusion designs you hear about, whether it's a tokamak, which is shaped like a donut, or a stellarator, which is kind of like a twisted donut, they're all just fancy magnetic bottles. And in every single one, the biggest enemy isn't the crazy temperature or the plasma's density. No, it's the physical wall of the reactor itself. And to really get a feel for this problem, you have to look at the numbers. 20 megawatts per square meter. That's the constant, unrelenting heat that the inside of a reactor like ITER has to deal with. To put that into perspective for you, that is literally double the heat a space shuttle feels when it's re-entering Earth's atmosphere. There is no material known to man that can just sit there and take that kind of abuse for very long. And it's not just one problem, it's this catastrophic chain reaction, right? Particles from the superheated plasma smash into the wall. Then, little bits of the wall, we're talking impurities, get blasted back into the plasma. That poisons the fusion reaction, and poof, it fizzles out. Meanwhile, the wall itself is getting eroded, cracked, and destroyed, which means you have to shut down your multi-billion dollar machine all the time for incredibly expensive repairs. It's just an absolute engineering nightmare. So here's the bottom line, and it's a tough pill to swallow. We can already create fusion. That part of the science works. But the machines we've built to contain it literally tear themselves apart in the process. They can produce the reaction, but they just can't survive it long enough to be a practical, reliable source of energy. It's an engineering dead end, and a very, very expensive one at that. Okay, but believe it or not, the wall isn't even the only fatal flaw here. Even if you could just wave a magic wand and solve it, there's a second, equally huge problem. How these reactors are supposed to actually make electricity. Just look at this process for a second. Sound familiar? Yeah, it should. It's the same basic system we've been using in coal plants and nuclear fission plants for over a hundred years. You make a ton of heat, you use that heat to boil water, you make steam, and then you use the steam to physically spin a giant metal turbine. It's slow, it's inefficient, and it's full of clunky mechanical parts. I mean, this is the ultimate mismatch, isn't it? We've got this unbelievably advanced 21st century power source. We're literally making a tiny star here on Earth, and we're trying to plug it into a clunky 1950s era electrical grid based on steam. It's like trying to run a quantum computer with a coal furnace. It just makes the whole thing fragile, insanely expensive, and incredibly inefficient. All right, so we've painted a pretty bleak picture, right? The wall problem, the ancient steam turbine, it really feels like a dead end. But what if, what if we've been asking the completely wrong question this whole time? What if we stopped trying to build a better container? I mean, really think about this. This one simple question changes everything. Instead of building stronger and stronger boxes, what if we could set up a system where the hot fusion fuel is just held in place by invisible forces? never getting anywhere near a physical wall. And that brings us to this radically new idea, field-only fusion. The core concept is to use incredibly precise magnetic and electromagnetic fields, not just to hold the plasma, but to actually guide the energy out of it and turn it straight into electricity. You completely sidestep the need for walls and steam altogether. So how in the world does that actually work? Well, this is where we stop thinking like steam age mechanics and start thinking like information age engineers. 
it means we stop treating the plasma like some chaotic hot gas that we have to bottle up, and instead, we start treating it as something way more elegant, a system of energy waves that we can precisely guide and control. And this really shows you the night and day difference. On the left, you've got the old way, that slow, inefficient thermal process. It's just messy. But on the right, you see the new way, direct conversion. It's a totally different philosophy. Instead of using fusion's heat, you use its main product, charged particles. And these particles are, for all intents and purposes, an electric current. So you just use magnetic fields to guide that current right into a circuit. It's a solid state system, no moving parts, no steam, and way, way higher potential efficiency. Now, as you can imagine, controlling a star with nothing but invisible fields takes an insane amount of precision. And that's where a new way of looking at physics called the Harmonic Scale Framework, or HSF, comes in. You can basically think of it like the ultimate pair of noise-canceling headphones for a fusion reaction. Instead of trying to just brute force the plasma into staying put, HSF sees it as a symphony of waves. It listens to the plasma in real time and uses electromagnetic fields to create the perfect anti-noise to cancel out any instabilities instantly. So, okay, let's say this all works. What does that future actually look like? Well, the implications are huge. They go way beyond just fixing the problems with today's reactors. This completely changes the game. Let's just run through the benefits, because they are game changers. First, you totally eliminate the wall problem. Gone. Second, you get electricity straight out of the machine. No steam turbines needed. Because the whole system is simpler and solid state, the power plants themselves can be much smaller, built-in modules, and be way cheaper. This also opens the door to using cleaner, more advanced fusion fuels, ones that produce way less damaging radiation. So what you get, ultimately, is a real, scalable, and actually affordable path to commercial fusion power. And just when you think it can't get any cooler, there's this. That same exact technology, small, compact, super efficient fusion reactors that generate electricity directly, is precisely what you'd need for high-speed space travel. A compact fusion drive could get a ship to Mars in weeks, not months. Mastering this field logic isn't just about powering our world, it might be about powering our way to new worlds. So that leaves us with this incredible thought. For 70 years, we've been stuck trying to solve a container problem. But what if, by changing our whole perspective to a field problem, by learning to guide waves instead of just bottling up chaos, we not only solve the fusion paradox here on Earth, but we also give ourselves the key to finally exploring the stars. It suggests the future isn't 30 years away, it might have been waiting for us down a different path this whole time.